Sierra Ascension Pioneers. Welcome to a video in nature. I decided to record one outside because apparently there was some bad weather coming so I wanted to use up this summer and I hope I'm in the frame because I'm recording myself. Typical. So anyway, because there's my birthday that's coming very soon, you know, and also, you know, nature, I see there are these saffrons that grow here in the fall, fall flowers already. And um, for me, fall is like the beginning of a new cycle. And recently in nature, I see everything, you know, from a shedded snake skin to the numbers, to everything. And today I even got this beautiful card, which I'll read to all of you later. It's from my Angels of Atlantis Oracle card deck. And it's called Beginnings. And it's a beautiful card and beautiful message, which I'll read at the end if you stay tuned for the entire video. I hope you bear with me because I have a very important video to make. I would like to make an Ascension update and overview for all of you, for all of us. For all those of you also who are new and tuned in to Ascension Pioneers just recently. So this is something to kind of represent the things that I've been talking about the entire year. And basically ever since I started doing Ascension Pioneers in August last year. So, hey, one year of making it. This is like something very new for me. Anyway, these are the topics that I want to mention right now. And I'll scan through them from my notebook. I would like to mention a few words about 2012, a reality or a myth, diet, body changes, abundance, money flow, relationships and twin flames, soul templates and imprints, embracing the shadow, <coughs> walking in the new and of course establishing our source connection with our higher self so these are the things i want to right now mention more about and um like make an overview because i have a feeling because the cycle is ending especially for me my birthday is on the september 15th and i'm a virgo and now we've already entered the virgo uh in the sun you know the sun sign is in virgo and i feel very in my in my zone i feel tuned in i feel very good in my own energy because the sun represents our personality you know how our personality feels and my personality feels very great right now so maybe that's why such an increased flow of videos recently and my writings and everything i'm just guided to do things so i feel something new is coming in and that's when i make like a conclusion of everything that i've been talking about everything that is shifting and everything that is important for the ascension Okay, so I'll start with 2012. Yesterday, no, it was today, I saw a video about 2012 and uh, about this being just a number, whether it is just a number, whether it's just a date on the calendar, whether we give too much power away to that date, and that the shift is the shift in consciousness, but we don't have to travel that road and hope for something to happen and think that that is our shift, but we have to really walk the journey and know that this shift is within us. I agree with this part of the video, but I think it's too. I think this is going to be my perspective on this. My perspective on this is that 2012, you know, there was this issue and uh, the question was raised whether, because we used a Gregorian calendar, which was kind of like, you know, pushed to humanity. It was like um, pushed forward, like we had to use it. Some say it's a very manipulated calendar, just like religion. and whether that is not the true 2012 date that the Mayan discuss about the ending of the cycles, you know, that it's all about just the astrological alignments, the cycles that are changing. But what if, you know, we have to keep ourselves busy with asking questions. What if they were talking about the 2012 that we will be experiencing, which is through Gregorian calendar, you know, you can never really just take one option and one version of what one person says. You have to listen to yourself. And my perspective on it is that it is the inner shift. It is the internal process. And when I say 2012, don't take me wrong. Don't take me the wrong way. But when I say 2012, I mean right here and now, because this is the year that we get to do it. You know, there is no other time because everything is happening in the now. So when I say you are shifting, you're clearing. When I say 2012, that's what I mean. I don't mean that I give power away to a certain date. So for all those of you who think that I do that, I do not. And I, f I think and I feel it's both because there is a galactic alignment happening in the 2012. And whether or not we choose to believe it, it's happening anyway. But of course, it is not to give our power away. So I've received a few questions about this. You know, Paluna wins ascension. What's happening in 2012? What's happening on the December 21st? And I think these were really disempowering questions and they bugged me at the beginning, you know, when I started doing my communication with people and 
questions and answers and I really at the end I just didn't reply no longer because I really didn't want to waste my energy on such questions I'd rather spend time you know talking about what's truly important for those people who know what the shift is about and it is about the internal process the shift in consciousness because we are increasing our awareness and that therefore we're tapping into the more broad specter of consciousness like a beautiful friend of light sister of light said today on Facebook that with the increased overflow of all this information about the portals, shifts, uh, chakras and everything, which basically is all the same, she said, let us not be misled by thinking that we just are going to walk through it because it has to be internal work here. We have to go through deep initiations, which are the only way to embody that, which is what I speak about myself in my videos. So that is kind of like an overview of what 2012 represents for me and what I share with all of you pioneers. Okay. Uh, this was my perspective. Now I want to go to the subject of diet and body changes. For instance, just right now when a certain cycle is closing for me, I'm noticing an immense change in my body. This summer basically was a huge shift. And before I was vegan and a little bit of raw, but now I think I'm going to shift more into just raw vegan because my body is basically expanding because my consciousness is becoming more broadened. You know, my awareness is wider, so I shift to more light of my being and therefore I need more light in my food. And I feel these changes come to us naturally. So for all those of you who keep asking yourselves questions whether I should change the diet, if it's coming from the mind and if you don't feel good about it if you feel pushed you know if your body still isn't sending you any signals for the change then don't change you know they'll make the changes but when your body is sending you messages like it did to me with changed digestion and more bloatedness and things like that I see that basically my body is reacting differently and sending me messages that you know Perona just shift to more light you know do do the transition you know it's not something difficult just do it and after my run today I just felt yeah I'm gonna go more raw vegan you know sometimes here where I live it's not very easy because in the winter we have sort of sorts of vegetables that are like really hard you know they grow in earth you need to cook them and you need to bake the potatoes of course because potatoes raws are not to be eaten <laughs> and things like that but still I think at least 50% of the food like many say should be put in our bodies that is raw so that is very important legumes legumes uh, what's it called nuts fruits vegetables you know smoothies from all of that uh, chew your food uh, energize it through really loving what you eat uh, sharing your meals with the ones you love that's all very important and it, it's a part of the ascension journey because food is prana it's chi energy and everything around us is chi and you don't want to put something that is less than your own light in your body, right? It has to be an equalized balance. So the more light that you in, uh, anchor in your body, the more light that you need to feed yourself with, you know, think, kind of like that. It's very proportional. Uh, I also want to speak about abundance and money flow. Uh, my example recently was just yesterday. Um, I was talking in one of my previous videos about these financial challenges that are happening now when a certain cycle is ending so the old is no longer bringing us abundance and that is felt when something starts stops flowing then you know that you need to shift you need to do something new which will again it will support you abundantly also your finances so we have to keep our mind open and think out of the box because we're always supported when we're on the right path and this is what ascension is about trusting that you're always supported when you're serving yourself and all others through that so know that when something shifts you also get to shift and that's when you get new support so for me also it's very important and for all of us that we don't think limited in the, in the terms even if you don't have financial means at a certain point you think you can afford something because if you keep thinking I can afford this or that you, you, you know you will keep manifesting that you will keep bringing that in your field and you will keep having these thoughts which create of course so for me yesterday after receiving one donation I thought I was guided because I watched a video from this woman sharing on something. I thought I would get something for myself for my birthday because usually I just share with everyone else and I rarely get to treat myself. And I was really guided to buy something for me, just for me, for my birthday. I said, just because it's my birthday. And then this thought wanted to come, oh no, no, I won't, you know. But then I really, you know, I tried and the amount came out like $27. And I'm like, 27 is my number that keeps following me. And I felt that this is a divine confirmation telling me to trust. And right after I did that, and I really put the order in through PayPal, you know, I just got, 
again I was guided to to talk to someone and they offered um, a session to do a session with me they wanted to do a session and I was so happy because I saw that the moment I think that I can afford that I am abundant another influx of um, financial means came through you see we have to make the step first and trust and then it comes this is the way of the new okay so when there is flow in your life know that you're in the right path when you feel that you you're no longer supported then this is no longer in your ascension path you need to make a certain change because you are changing constantly your awareness is, keeps being changed so therefore life changes are being made as well they need to flow okay relationships on twin flames this is something that is its biggest essence is mirroring mirroring is what is most needed right now on the planet because for me people who ask me questions on twin flames and ask me things like they really feel more like drama you know whether he or she is my twin flame it's not about that it's about sharing and anchoring love on this planet it doesn't matter who you end up with but like my friend said just recently when we went out she said I don't care whether that person be my soul partner, soulmate, twin flame, I will recognize the one. And we do. We recognize them and we know, we feel that we share a certain purpose. It's about meeting our life partner, not associating with labels as to who they are. But when we do know and feel that it's our twin flame, we will know and we will experience immense challenges. And I speak and write a lot about this, so do check my webpage if you seek further guidance on twin flames that is not of the new age. And most important thing about Twin Flames is the initiations they go through because they have to anchor and mirror divine love here on Earth, on the planet. That's our greatest purpose with Twin Flames, you know, is to be that love embodied. Because so many people speak about love, but you have to live it. You have to be it in full essence. So it's about mirroring, you know, the other aspect of you, which is your Twin Flame, will, is your direct counterpart and they will mirror the exact polarized opposite to you they will be a different personality but same energy so they will have for instance certain abilities and things that you don't have so much developed so they can mirror that to you and together you're whole and perfect although you're also perfected on your own so that is the the main purpose of twin flames you know that's what we're learning through our counterparts and that is what we're anchoring here in Gaia okay about soul templates imprints and soul purpose recently I was reading about this no, I saw a video, and the next day I read a book from Dolores Cannon, and the same thing comes through, you know, same information about soul, soul templates, so I just want to mention them briefly, this is new information for me, I, I felt this before, but it just started to come through, you know, when things come uh, in many numbers, this is a synchronicity, and I keep recognizing it, so it's kind of like this, you know, there's a lot of souls right now on the planet that were not here ever physically, but they still have feeling they have physical experience and they're not like I'm not totally brand new why this happens is because in the Akasha you know in the imprints of all that is of everything that has ever happened will happen and is happening a soul can actually go there and seek information and dwell in it and basically pour itself into it you know um, how do you use um, terming in English the right terminology for this is you melt with it you take in you take this imprint of a certain event, of a certain personality, whatever you need for your mission and purpose here. Because I've been talking about this, the life spent here on Earth is short. So these things are needed for the volunteering souls that, you know, if they would come here without any experience, without any templates, any previous knowing, they might have felt very hostile over here. You know, the planet is very hostile, they might have felt threatened or very scared and dealing with emotions they have never experienced before. So. These are basically so templates, you know, it, the term used is either template or imprint, I think this is the same thing, but it is connected directly with the sole purpose. You are thinking sometimes, people who like to speak about past lives a lot, that you have experienced a certain past life, and um, Dolores then in the book, she asked the client, you know, how do I know whether I'm speaking to the true person who actually experienced that in the physical embodiment or just did they have this imprint? And he said, does that really matter? And that's the truth. It doesn't matter because all is one consciousness, one source. So it's about the experience. It's not about who got to live a certain life, you know. And she says, basically, that probably that's why there were so many Cleopatras and Napoleons, you know. But the thing is, the experiences are shared. And it's all good and fine, you know. It's about what you get to do here on the planet. It doesn't matter who gets to do it. It's about the divine creation unfolding by the divine master plan. 
So that's what it's about. And I think that this information is really important and that people need to start understanding this, that it's not so much about past lives, it's about what you are here to do through your purpose here and now. And that is what I've been speaking a lot in my videos as well. So do tune in to that. Mm. So also what is really important in the essential journey is embracing your shadow. There is no moving forward. There is no being and living in the new before you really embrace your shadow. And that means embracing the shadow on the planet and everyone else, all the mirrors that are in your external, direct external environment. Because for instance, my own example is I used to have bad comments on YouTube. I you know they're still thumbs down, but that's because people still like to act out of their egoic self instead of true love, love that binds all things and essence of creation. But when you really make peace with all of that, these things just stop appearing for me, you know? Lately, I just check my YouTube and there's no bad things and there's no bad messages. And that's when you see, you know, that you have shifted in your awareness through acceptance, compassion and grace that you are. So compassion energetically shifts things forward. It transmutes them through divine alchemy and compassion is the great formula for that. Um, I think this is the most important part on the journey. So if you're guided to watch my videos about this, I was speaking about this the entire year. It's all about embracing the shadow through compassion and unconditional love. And this is what ascension is about. Through that, you get to really purify yourself. It's not just that you do violet flame meditations and you're purified. You have to walk it, you have to live it. You don't just go through the portal. You become that portal yourself, which you already are, but you get to establish this connection here on earth. You know, we are merging our divine and human self together. And uh, lately, I've been seeing videos of others speaking about this. Just today I've been watching Tom Lisher after a while and he said the same thing. He said, we're merging spirit and matter. And I'm like, did he watch my video? <laughs> because we're basically speaking about the same things. Oh, and there's another thing. Apparently the moon notes have changed from Gemini, Sagittarius to Taurus and Scorpio. And that's for 18 months. Every 18 months that happens. So that's basically another spiritual shift, which is happening now. And this is all synchronistically with the new full moon see everything is changing everything is shifting and there's so much new and that's why i feel this is also you know i had to speak about this i had to make this overview of things because we have a very powerful strong full moon tomorrow on the 31st and basically it aligns directly with the shift to september to the first it's synchronistically in the same timing so that's really important, that's really interesting, I feel. And I feel that's like a huge conclusion, like everything, all the baggage and everything, all the lessons we have worked through the entire year are now kind of like, go through with it. You know, take, take what you have learned, take the experience, take the knowing, take the remembrance and all the other things, let go. You see, that's what it's about. So, also, it's about walking the new, how you walk in the new, how you know that you are in the new. Because your relationships become harmonious, your environment will directly mirror you. You know, if there's still violent, nasty people who will not respect you, you know, jobs, that you're still in some kind of situations, life situations that you do not like, you have to make a change. And when you feel res um, resistant to it, you feel that great push and resistance, that's, you know, that's blocking your flow. Because your spirituality is changing, your level of beingness is changing, so therefore your physicality needs to change as well. So this means through the establishing of our source connection, once again becoming our best versions of ourselves, through anchoring the source self of ours, we are continuously making changes, day by day. And that's what the Ascension journey is about, and that's happening and will continue to happen. So. Again, let me come back to the beginning. 2012 is just a number, but at the same time, it's not. Because everything is... My birds are singing, you know? My buzzard birds. And they're clarifying this. They're saying like a clarion bell. Like, yeah, it's true. It's true. You know, there are new beginnings, but we get to decide. And we get to decide what things mean for us. And before I make a conclusion, I would like to read this card to all of you. The beginnings card in that booklet. So the beginnings card, it's a message for all of us, says, 
Extraordinary new opportunities are dawning for you, drawing you to new people and new places and new projects. Shamael wishes to lovingly assist you and, as anxiety often precedes change, asks you to call upon the might of all the angels of Atlantis to help in order to arrive just where you would like to be. Before this fruitfully occurs, it may be appropriate for you to release old projects, old patterns of behavior, old ideas, or old acquaintances. See the new, because the new is actually old as well, as a time to be met by the sun of the source with renewed vigor and well-being, just as you greet the new dawn, the new day, with love, hope, and joy. So that's how we bring the new energies forth, through our love, joy, compassion, and don't forget, we're learning through mirroring and um, while everything becomes exposed to the light where there's nothing less but just light that is the path of ascension so that's what it's about and don't forget we're staying here on earth we're not moving anywhere <laughs> our lives needs to change to physicality we need to make physical changes that follow our spiritual changes and that's what Tom Lesher said today as well he said we are we were exploring we were researching this entire year but now it's time to really do the you know the work Go to the fields, create something new, in the physical, in the tangible form. So, what is your purpose? I know mine. <sighs> Have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you very soon. I hope you like this overview, and much love.